The string inverter is the dominant power conversion technology for rooftop residential PV applications. This video provides a, a very brief overview of a PV string inverter focusing on the various uh, sub-stages of the inverter and uh, explaining the uh, functionalities of uh, each stage. Uh, in another video, we looked at the uh, detailed specifications of a commercial PV string inverter. Uh, in this slide, I just wanted to give uh, a brief uh, recap of some of the important uh, input-output specifications uh, as well as the main functional requirements of a string inverter. Now, as the name suggests, a string inverter supports, uh, it operates from a single string of PV panels and a single string can have anywhere between, um, say, 6 panels to about uh, 15 panels or so. So in order to be able to support this uh, different numbers of PV panels uh, and also due to the fact that the PV voltage can uh, vary significantly with the temperature, the uh, string inverters uh, need to operate from a wide range of input voltages. So typically it can be between uh, uh, 250 volts to about 550 volts. Now on the AC side, the uh, PV inverters interface to the grid at uh, either 120 to 40 volts. So for example, in uh, uh, most residences in the US, the power is supplied through a three wire 120 to 240 volt system and the PV inverters connect directly to the 240 volts terminals. Or they can be connected between two phases in a three phase system, say between A and B, so the line to line voltage being 208 volts. Or in a 480 volts three phase system, they can be connected between the uh, line and neutral, uh, which is a 277 volts. Um, so a single string inverter should be designed such that they can operate with any of these uh, four uh, AC voltage levels. And uh, the grid voltage can also uh, have a variation of plus 10% to minus 12%. Uh, typical power ratings of a string inverters are uh, between 2 to 6 kilowatt. Um, and um, uh, majority of the utilities, at least here in the U.S., still require that the uh, string inverters have galvanic isolation built into them through a transformer. And uh, very often it is uh, easier to provide this isolation through a high-frequency transformer and most often in the DC-DC conversion, conversion stage of the string inverter. Now, coming to the functional and uh, performance requirements. The uh, string inverters uh, at present invariably operate as uh, controlled sinusoidal current sources uh, and, and again at present operating exactly at unity per factor. Now the um, smart inverters in the near future um, would be required to operate at um, arbitrary, uh, other arbitrary power factors and to provide reactive power support to the grid. But as of now, uh, all inverters operate exactly at unity power factor. The uh, waveform quality of the current that is injected into the grid, uh, there is also a very stringent requirement. And uh, this is uh, given in terms of the total harmonic distortion, THT, allowed in the line current. So, and that is uh, typically in, in the uh, less than 2-3% range for um, uh, inverters of uh, most uh, major manufacturers. The PV inverters are highly efficient and uh, the efficiency of um, most string inverters are uh, above 95% and this is 95% uh, CEC efficiency. So this is uh, one form of uh, weighted average efficiency taken at uh, many different operating conditions. CEC stands for California Energy Commission and this is a uh, standard uh, provided by them for measuring uh, inverter efficiency and to have a standard metric for comparing inverters of different manufacturers. Um, another key function that is required of all in PV inverters is this maximum power point tracking. As the uh, environmental conditions change, the uh, inverter should uh, continuously adjust the uh, effective impedance seen by the, uh, the PV panels. Uh, in order to uh, uh, continuously draw the maximum possible power uh, from the sun. So this, uh, there are many different MPPD algorithms and uh, in some of the um, later videos we look at uh, uh, a few uh, popular MPPD uh, methods. Uh, 
Uh, finally, the uh, stinging birds also need to meet several uh, safety um, and protection requirements. Uh, for example, the requirement for a DC disconnect switch, the um, ground fault uh, detection and inter interruption requirements, the anti-islanding requirements. So we'll be um, studying about them also um, in, in some of the future videos. Now, some of the relevant standards uh, that all PV inverters should satisfy uh, include the uh, UL 1741 uh, safety requirement, the uh, IEEE 1547 guidelines for interconnecting distributed generation to the uh, to the distribution systems, um, and uh, in the US the um, NEC uh, uh, electric uh, codes. Okay, then the uh, the main control functions or the main control loops present in uh, all uh, string inverters are listed here. Uh, as we saw in the previous slide, the MPPT is a major control requirement and this is done by a dedicated um, control loop uh, using one of uh, many different uh, MPPT algorithms. Uh, then we need to have an AC current control loop and this injects a current um, at unity power factor at present and uh, the current control loop inherently requires a grid synchronization loop in order to uh, synchronize the injected current to the uh, uh, to the grid voltage and this is uh, quite often done using a dedicated phase locked loop PLL. Uh, I also mentioned this uh, anti-islanding is one of the uh, safety protection requirement so this is related to um, when there is a grid failure all uh, inverters all distributed generators are required to disconnect and uh, de-energize the distribution system within a specified time it's two seconds per IEEE 1547 so there is uh, an active control loop which does uh, this island detection um, again it's not trivial to uh, detect an island especially when the um, um, the local load matches exactly with the uh, with the PV generation so we need to have some kind of an active uh, feedback positive feedback based methods in order to detect an island and that is uh, that is the function of this um, anti-islanding uh, control loop then internally we have this DC link voltage which determines the uh, voltage rating of the various uh, power semiconductor devices and they need to be uh, uh, quite precisely regulated that is one of the main control loops in the near future the uh, String inverters may be required to perform grid support functions like reactive power support. The uh, power hardware is already capable of supporting many of these uh, functions, the reactive power support or ramp rate control. Uh, just that the uh, relevant standards need to be developed and the controller needs to be uh, redesigned and implemented in, uh, in, these, uh, in these inverters. Similarly, the uh, storage management may also become um, a feature or a requirement in uh, in the future string inverters okay here is the complete block diagram showing the various stages of a high frequency transformer isolated PV string inverter the two main power conversion stages are this DC DC stage and this DC to AC PWM stage now here is the uh, PV string consisting of several series connected PV panels. A key consideration in uh, PV inverters is this need for um, a clearly visible and uh, easily accessible mechanical DC disconnect switch as shown here. Now that gets connected to the first stage which is the um, EMI filtering and uh, DC protection um, stage. The EMI filters consist of uh, different combinations of L and C to reduce this uh, electromagnetic interference as required by standards. Um, and the protection uh, involves uh, fuses, uh, reverse polarity protection, and uh, this ground fault interrupting devices. The next stage is this um, DC to DC converter, and uh, this has this high frequency transformer. Now the input to the DC-DC converter as we saw previously is the PV voltage which uh, varies between say 250 volts to 550 volts and the output of the DC-DC converter is regulated, precisely regulated 
to about 400 volts to uh, probably about 450 volts uh, DC. Okay. We need this 450 volts DC if we need to uh, interface the uh, uh, inverter to the grid at uh, 277 volts uh, RMS as we saw in, uh, in our previous uh, specifications. Now, if the uh, PV array is grounded, um, probably it is required by some utilities, then we necessarily need this transformer isolation. And um, this side is with respect to the ground, whereas this is isolated from the from the input ground. Now, the DC-DC converter uh, connects to the, uh, the bulk electrolytic capacitors. Now, we need these uh, large bulk capacitors uh, because uh, in a single phase system the uh, instantaneous power that is injected into the grid is pulsating it is pulsating at twice the line frequency 120 Hertz in the US uh, whereas uh, we want the power taken from the the PV panels instantaneously to be uh, a smooth continuous power so that we get we always operate at the maximum possible power from the from the PV arrays so therefore, the uh, balance between this pulsating power and the uh, constant power from the PV panel that has to be stored somewhere, and this being at a fairly low frequency, like 120 hertz, we need uh, large uh, capacitors uh, to to support that much of an energy storage for um, uh, at 120 hertz periods. The output of the uh, DC DC stage, the output voltage, which is also the voltage across the bulk capacitors that forms the DC link voltage. The voltage here is the, uh, or across the, the bulk capacitors, is the DC link voltage, which forms the input to the next stage, uh, which is where the actual conversion from the DC voltage to AC takes place in this uh, DC to AC PWM converter, or pulse width modulated converter. The PWM stage uh, injects controlled sinusoidal current into the grid um, the current is in phase with the voltage and with the amplitude decided by the maximum power possible from the from the PV array. The AC line filter, uh, either, an, either a single L filter or an LCL filter, uh, is designed such that the uh, THD requirement on the current injected, injected into the grid is met. And finally, we have the AC side circuit breaker and uh, this is used to disconnect the inverter from the grid uh, for example during a grid failure when there is an island detected then the way it disconnects itself from the uh, grid is by switching off all the gate pulses and opening this mechanical circuit breaker uh, or when there is uh, during the night when there is no um, solar output uh, the circuit breaker is kept open and it is connected only um, when uh, the inverter voltage is completely synchronized to the grid voltage um, after there is uh, enough um, uh, insulation to start operating the uh, the inverter. And finally, all uh, PV inverters have some form of a digital control platform to control the uh, the two stages, the DC DC stage and the DC to AC stage. So it's either uh, uh, a DSP or an FPGA or some combination of the two. Uh, to generate these control uh, signals and the PWM gate drive for the power devices of the two stages. The inverters also feature extensive communication capability. Uh, so that is used to uh, communicate uh, several, um, uh, for status monitoring, to communicate um, the power generated, the total energy harvested, uh, and so on. And these uh, capabilities will eventually be used for um, communicating with the grid to provide grid support features.